Hey there, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd, and right about this time of year is when I start hearing from my clients and questions on Ask Garden Nerd about why my squash is dropping off the plant without, or you know, why it's turning brown and falling off. So it could be one of three, maybe four reasons. So let's talk about that. Number one, both winter and summer squashes are considered heavy feeders. In fact, most things that produce a fruit are heavy feeders. Hey, Mittens is here. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. Uh, so this, this means that if your soil isn't nutrient dense, you're probably going to need to feed your summer squash and your winter squash at least once a month. What I like to do is mix it with a little, I mix a little granular organic fertilizer for vegetables with a little bit of compost or worm castings and <clears throat> combine that together, sprinkle it around each plant, scratch it in, water it in. And definitely start doing this when you start seeing blossoms opening on your squash plants. And that will ensure continued production throughout because it's, you know, very likely that the, the, the plant used up a lot of the nutrients that are in the soil or that it has access to, we'll talk about the second thing in a minute, uh, by growing big and green. And now it needs phosphorus and potassium in order to flower and set fruit. Those are the second two nutrients on that box of fertilizer, FYI. Now, there are occasionally times when your soil may have everything that it needs in it, but the plant can't access it. And that could be a lack of soil biology in your soil, bacterial fungi, protozoa, and nematodes that actually turn food they can access in the soil into something the plant can use. So always keep your soil happy with lots of compost, compost tea, and mulch. There are other videos that talk all about that <clears throat> on this channel. So there's also the possibility that if, if the fruit is turning kind of moldy on the end and dropping off, that could be something called blossom end rot, which again is a lack of access to calcium in the soil. Now it doesn't mean your soil doesn't have enough calcium, probably does, it's just that it can't access it. So if you think about how when we take multivitamins or calcium supplements, it's usually paired with magnesium in order to allow uptake. So what is that in terms of gardening? It's Epsom salts. It's not salt, it's magnesium sulfate. So if you water your plants with diluted magnesium sulfate, Epsom salts, uh, that will help facilitate calcium uptake. Look who's here, hi Mittens. I don't think you can see her. Hi Pookie. Anyway, so that's reason number one. Number two, is a lack of pollination. And this is most often the case. Now, I have a beehive right over here, but I still leave nothing to chance. Every morning, I come out and I hand pollinate my squash with a good old fashioned watercolor paintbrush. It's really easy to do, and I have a link to the blog post that explains this and shows you the difference between male and female flowers so that you know what to paint where. <laughs> uh, in the show notes down below. So basically what you're doing is you're looking for male flowers that are on a long stem and you're taking pollen from that and painting it on the female flowers that have the fruit at the base of the flower. And then voila, plant sex, you will have fruit. And the thing about that is that you need to know is that these flowers only stay open for a couple of hours. So come out into your garden before the sun hits the plants and usually by 9.30 they've already closed up and started to wither. So early morning task that you can accomplish really easily and you'll get more fruit that way. The third possible reason why you might have squash withering and falling off the plant is maybe a fungal infestation like powdery mildew or downy mildew. Uh, if your plants, you know, they like to grow big and get lots of leaves, so that really cuts down on air circulation. And if you live in a coastal environment where you get a marine layer or if you're watering from overhead, that could promote the uh, onset of powdery mildew. So it's a good idea to thin the plants out, make sure there's lots of air circulation, take off any leaves that have been infected with powdery mildew, and that will help solve your air circulation problem. So those are three reasons, and then some, why your squash plants might not be setting fruit or might be falling off after they set fruit. 
I hope you like this video. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when our next video comes online. And you'll find a lot more information about how to grow squash and all the other summer crops at GardenNerd.com and in my books, Gardening for Geeks and Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden. And of course, check out my new novel that is set in a community garden here in Los Angeles, Garden Variety. Happy gardening!